accusations Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has hung Israel, Australia's closest security partner in the Middle East, out to dry, all to avoid a messy factional fight at na next week's national conference. The fringes of Labor's radical left wing now determining our foreign policy. And it all has the tick of, tick of approval from Bob Carr. But it's caused Australia embarrassment on the international stage and in the eyes of our closest ally, the United States. The federal Labor government will now call the West Bank and Gaza occupied Palestinian territories. And they say Israelis' West Bank settlements are illegal under international law. Under Labor's updated policy, Judaism's holiest sites, the Temple Mount and Western Wall, will be considered to be in occupied Palestinian territory. Opposition leader Peter Dutton opened Question Time today, demanding Albanese answer why factional backroom deals were jeopardising our relationship with a critical national security ally. Can the Prime Minister explain why his government has taken a decision to unilaterally determine where Israel's borders lie? Does the Prime Minister Order. think it was appropriate for him to hang one of Australia's closest Middle East security partners out to dry as part of a backroom deal to avoid an embarrassing factional fight over AUKUS at Labor's national conference? There's been no unilateral action by my government. My government is a strong supporter of Israel and its right to exist within secure borders. We also support a two-state solution that includes a Palestinian state. We think that it is in the interests of both Israelis and Palestinians for there to not be actions by either side that undermine the potential of the achievement of that two-state solution. Well, Australia's former ambassador to Israel, Dave Sharma, made a similar point to Dutton today as well, saying why should Labor's fact factional backroom deals be determining their foreign policy? It's internal Labor Party politics, and that's not normally how you make foreign policy decisions. And remember, it was a tip-off from Israel that meant Australia was able to avert a major terrorist attack just a few years ago. Well, the Executive Council of Australian Jury and the Zionist Federation of Australia say Labor's change in language is inaccurate, ahistorical and counterproductive. In a statement, they said describing East Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza as occupied Palestinian territories effectively denies any Jewish claim to the West Bank in Jerusalem. They said Palestinians and Israelis agreed in 1993 that the settlements and the division of the West Bank and Gaza would be subject to final status negotiations. The foreign minister has previously stated that Australia should not preempt the outcome of final status issues. They say it is regrettable the government has now done that. They also point out that Palestinian terrorism against Israeli targets has risen dramatically and Palestinian leadership has refused to enter into negotiations with Israel in the last two years, instead of attempting to preempt the outcome of negotiations in favour of a party that refuses to negotiate. They say the Australian government should be urging the Palestinians to return to the negotiating table. Now, this policy of Labor's is highly problematic. When you look at the Albanese government, Treasurer Jim Chalmers clearly understands middle Australia. Bill Shorten has a similar mainstream policy outlook. But Albanese seems to approach issues from the left. Israel is so far removed from being an issue that most Australians care about, particularly during a major cost of living crisis, and yet it remains a core obsession for the far Labor left. Bill Shorten and Julia Gillard were firm friends of Israel. So were Bob Hawke and Paul Keating. But Albanese has come from the far left fringes of the Labor Party himself. And this history, this background, inevitably underpins his approach to policy as Prime Minister. Albanese has never been a natural supporter of Israel. 
A look back at his public comments and parliamentary speeches shows this. The year before he became leader, before he became opposition leader, he accused Israel of not acting in a proportionate way and he backed an investigation by the biased UN Human Rights Council into, and I quote, the disproportionate and indiscriminate use of force by the Israeli occupying forces against Pal Palestinian civilians. Albanese backing that investigation. It was clearly a biased motion that Australia and the United States didn't support, but Albanese did, and he spoke about it on ABC television. This from 2018. No doubt there has been provocation uh, in Gaza, but uh, international law requires a proportionate response. And those people who have guns on one side and on the other side has rocks. And it went on. And in 2017, Albanese gave a talk on Palestine alongside two of Israel's biggest critics, Bob Carr and Tony Burke. This was a policy forum on Palestine in June 2017. But this has been Albanese's approach his entire career. He's been speaking about illegal settlements for 20 years, long before he finally managed as Prime Minister to pass the motion on the issue through Labor caucus just yesterday. This, these comments here are from 2002. While many Israelis continue to demonise all Palestinians as terrorists, Palestinians experience Israelis as occupiers and employers of cheap, cheap labour, interrogators and jailers. Meanwhile, the Government of Israel continues to allow fundamentalists to build illegal settlements on Palestinian land. Well, and here's Albanese speaking about occupied territories also in 2002. In the grievance debate on Monday, I pointed out that it is now more than 35 years since UN Security Council Resolution 242 was carried, the 22nd of November 1967 calling for Israel to remove its, its military and its control of the occupied territories. Since that time, the systematic repression of the occupied by the occupiers has been at the core of Middle East politics. And Albanese also called for Israel to return land to the Palestinians. The Palestinians must be given their homeland. The occupation of Gaza, the West Bank and East Jerusalem by the Israelis has created generations of oppressed people. Now have a look at some other inflammatory remarks he made. And I note that at times they were also wrong when it comes to his claim that Israel funded Hamas. The creation of the State of Israel in 1948 and subsequent events have produced up to 3.8 million Palestinian refugees to date. It is unfortunate that it was Israel who first funded Hamas. Then in more recent times, in 2015, Albanese spoke about witnessing Israeli oppression of Palestinians. And uh, looked at the humiliation which Palestinians were forced to undertake in queuing uh, to try to get across to get work each and every day. Uh, the ongoing uh, extreme poverty uh, that uh, people were subjected to and the lack of rights. And Albanese is partly responsible for setting up the Parliamentary Friends of Palestine group. Ajax's executive director Colin Rubenstein said that Israel captured the West Bank and Jerusalem from Jordan which illegally occupied the areas in defence of war. He says no Palestinian state has ever existed. He says the Albanese government couldn't possibly purport to know what the boundaries of any future two-state resolution would look like. And I quote from Colin Rubenstein, for a respected democracy such as Australia to take such a one-sided position only rewards and encourages the continuation of these destructive Palestinian tactics. He says this decision will make it extremely difficult for Australia to present itself as a credible and effective advocate for a two-state peace. 
The government's stance strains our long-standing bipartisan national policy of supporting a negotiated two-state peace and is detrimental to Australia's national interests. The Australian newspaper's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan, says that in capitulating to left-wing pressure to make another futile gesture against Israel, the Albanese government is wrong on international law and wrong on the morality of the situation. Sheridan argues that if Israel withdrew from the West Bank, there would immediately be a Palestinian civil war, as happened in Gaza, when Israel withdrew from there. He says the extremists would take over and begin launching attacks on Israel, as they constantly promise to do. This would lead to all-out war and reoccupation by Israel. Now, this is the first time Australia has had a Prime Minister who has been categorically a closer friend to the Palestinians than to Israel. It's not just the policy, but it's how this policy was communicated to Israel and Jewish advocacy groups. I can reveal that Foreign Minister Penny Wong had a meeting with senior Jewish community leaders just last week where Labor Party's position and policies were discussed. And yet, she made no mention, no mention of this fundamental change to Labor policy. It came as a shock to the community, a betrayal, when they found out yesterday morning. It seems Labor doesn't care about the Jewish vote. And Labor also doesn't care about the issues that matter most to Australians during this cost of living crisis, or about any genuine issues of human rights atrocities around the world. Where is Penny Wong speaking about China's human rights abuses? The government is basically silent on this. Labor MP and Palestinian advocate Graham Perrett couldn't answer why there is this obsession with Israel when he was on my show last night. Because I want to know why you and others and Labor caucus have this obsession with Israel. Why aren't you passing resolutions about the Uyghurs, the two million Muslims in concentration camps mm. in China? Where is Penny Wong talking about the Uyghurs? Why aren't you talking about Taiwan oh. under constant threat? Oh. Why aren't you speaking about the millions Sorry. of Syrians who had to leave their homes? Why isn't the Labor caucus passing resolutions about the Taliban, which has now banned mm. women in Afghanistan from seeing a doctor, from having an education, and they have to cover their heads and faces once again? Where are all of these resolutions mm. from Labor caucus, Graham? Why well, uh, are you Shari, the and the Labor government and Penny Wong Do you want so me to answer, obsessed Shari? with Israel? It is absolutely outrageous that these Palestinian... Uh, suicide bombing that continues is, con is just swept under the carpet by the Labor Party. Palestinians can do no wrong in their eyes and they condemn Israel at every opportunity. It is yeah. unbelievable. And That's the other rubbish. thing that these changes rubbish, will actually, actually have an impact... Oh, what, what's rubbish? rubbish? Pay for slaves rubbish? Pay for slaves rubbish? Really? No, no. They, they, they say that it's the idea that so that, what, that is swept... Why don't you that that is swept under the issues. carpet in the Labor them. Party. Look, Graham, mm. where well, are the You only know this because we, it was, we, we had the, the, the Labor Party caucus spokesperson come out and talk about it. That's why you know about it. How can you say it's being swept under the carpet? Where are the caucus motions celebrating? the the condemning of uh, terrorists that Holly's speaking about.